Hey everybody, Joe Jaguar here one more time on a nice coolish, not too cold, um, March. Spring's around the corner and it's clear again. So I could be eating bonbons. Isn't that what um, Married for Children, the uh, wife used to say? On the couch watching TV, but I figure, you know what? It's um, second clear night in a row. Uh, I think there was a one or two last week. Uh, you know that type of thing take the opportunity because i could be busy on the weekend and then if it you know i don't want to miss it because a lot of people kick themselves when they don't take the opportunity maybe they're too tired they come home from work but the weather does say that maybe within an hour it's going to start clouding so maybe i can do a couple things uh before the clouds come in and if it's an hour then i get um you know at least some observing done now mind you When using, uh, if you have a go-to or maybe using the star sense uh, type of thing, and again, we're gonna be using the 12 inch is my most used uh, scope. Why? Because all I have to do is I take the scope in one piece, put it down, and then the base, and that's it. And then my uh, case, that's it. It's just a, uh, so simple, it's go-to. It finds me easy stuff even though I can't, you know, and from a white zone, um, you know, it's harder. Now, before I used to find stuff easier uh, when I had no street lights hitting me, but now in this location that I do, it's really hard to star hop at all. So if you're like me and you're in a city and you have lots of street lights and you don't want to star hop and it take like an hour each object, Get something like this. The Star Sense is so easy, it's so fast, it's so accurate. Uh, the only time that I found it didn't work, like yesterday I was having some trouble, is when it's there on the roof. But if I go on the grass because it's out in the open, it catches the signal. But maybe because under the roof it wasn't catching, and that was the first time uh, yesterday that I found uh, it wasn't catching and kept searching and searching and searching so if you guys are like that and you're finding it difficulties and you have like an obstruction or something move it over because the signal might not reach um anyway let's get to it okay let's go back to this map here again find the orion constellation and there's two items on here that I want to just clear. Now, I'm not really going after double stars. You guys can do that if you like, or we could do that in the future. But for now, let's look at things that are going to be wow in the eyepiece. Um, so let's go after this cluster here. So again, if you're going to star hop, you can almost do like the distance of these two uh, Orion uh, stars. It's going to be roughly about there and then a little bit down. That's how you can star hop there. Um, and it's again much easier if you have like a Telrad or Rigel. But let's go to this guy here. And this is NGC 2244. It's an open cluster seen in binoculars, so very easy. So even if you have like a 80 millimeter refractor, if you're in the city, a four and a half inch reflector or anything even that small, you should be able to see it because you know, again, remember, this is binoculars in the country sky. So even something like a small scope, you should be seeing it. Now, here's the other thing. Now, it says this cluster is part of the, the Rosetta Nebula, but you're not going to see the Rosetta Nebula visually and not from a white zone. So again, we're going to see the cluster that's inside the nebula, but we, we will not see the nebula. You need dark, dark skies. Um, I'm not even 100% sure if you even with big scopes and dark skies, maybe you can kind of hint seeing it, but usually it's more photographically. Now, another one we're going to be taking a look at is here. Uh, again, this is a Messier, his uh, 78 item, and it's an 8 magnitude nebula. This one's very small, but it says it's easy. Let's give it a, a whirl. I mean, I do have the 12 inch out there. Uh, but I'm not dark adapted. When I do a video out there for you guys, I have to have either the cell phone light on 
uh, my curtains open, or otherwise you wouldn't even see anything I'm doing. So visually, you never want to do that, to have any lights on, flashlights, uh, house lights on, but I'm making a video for you guys, so you guys need to see me, uh, because if you go back about uh, two and a half years ago when I did my first uh, vi you know, videos from this place, you will see, you will see, you couldn't even see me or the scope or anything. So there's no point, uh, it was virtually all black. Now, when I go on the editing side, I can boost all the brightness, the gains, the exposure, but then it becomes so grainy, it looks almost like a um, night vision type of thing, which is not that great, you know what I mean? So uh, to show you guys a video, I need to have lights on, or I need to have some type of lighting uh, type of thing. But again, that nebula, let's see, even though it's a 12 inch, I'm in the white zone, I have all those street lights uh, hitting me, and um, I may have to use a nebula filter, we could try that um, for M78. We'll give it a shot. Now, it could be we, we can maybe do it, maybe we won't, but that's how you're gonna find uh, out what you can and can't do. But let's go outside and start before, you know, we have less than an hour before it clouds over. I mean, weather is never accurate, who knows? But let's go give it those uh, uh, those two a shot, and we almost clear everything from that page. Okay, so I'm going to do this one on cinematic, and I'm not sure which one's going to be better. So I'm going to keep uh, whichever video is better, and we'll see. Uh, you guys tell me which one you prefer, but again, there's the cluster, very easy. So if you were wanted to capture the Rosetta Nebula, you would need like a focal length or something that's gonna be a much, much wider field of view. Um, as you can see, you see how the cluster is moving? That's just the the sky movement. I'm, it's on a Dobsonian, it's mo I'm not moving it at all. Um, anyway, and that's why a 10 second uh, exposure would already be streaking. You can't really tell this small movement. As you can see, it's still inching upward, uh, at least on my cell phone screen. You know what else I did today? Because I find that the uh, there's Teflon for the bearings, um, and I don't find it so smooth. You know, it's actually kind of sticky. I'm gonna try to tackle this problem um, another time when I when I have lots of time on my hands. But what I just did is uh, sprayed. I don't know if you can see it. White lithium grease. You can, I think you could just see it there in white. So I just all around, uh, you can see a little bit over there. So because this is metal, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it, it is smoother than it was yesterday. Yeah, that's just quite a bit better. But, um, and then with the Teflon, uh, I was thinking of getting virgin Teflon. So virgin Teflon is smoother than just regular Teflon. So I'm gonna see if like, you know, once a month I have to grease them as long as I don't touch the grease or it wears down. Um, you know, I know people use sometimes a bar of soap and just do that, but I'm gonna try the lithium grease, see how long it lasts. I'll try the bar. I mean, most people don't have bar soap anyway, right? So I don't have it, but um, if I don't find it works, I might order um, like one square foot of, uh, virgin teflon and see if that's smoother just because i just you know with a dobsonian you know it's just you're always moving it so you need like as has to be as smooth as possible otherwise like what's the point but this definitely feels better than yesterday but it could be better a lot better okay, okay guys so i tried a 32 millimeter eyepiece I do see it looks like a like a small cluster. It's more like a boxy or rectangular uh, type. And then I went to a 15 millimeter Palazzo, and um, now I'm putting a 6.7 ultra wide to give me a bigger angle. And let's see if I see anything. Like I said, I saw like what looks like a star cluster, a very dispersed uh, star cluster. But uh, I tried a nebula filter with the 15 millimeter. I don't know if I need more power though. So I'm gonna 
maybe describe what I see in the eyepiece. Okay, let me go up to uh, now 6.7 ultra wide, so I have enough power because it says it's small. And I'm gonna put a narrow band filter. I don't know if I should just do broadband filter, but let's see if I see anything fuzzy, but I just don't think so. You know what, let me just back up the power. Let me back out the power a little bit more. Um, let me try a broadband filter because that way it doesn't dim it as much. And then we'll see what happens. And look, okay, I still see that cluster. Maybe what I should do is move this camera because I'm actually behind the telescope. And let me see. I don't know if the light's going to bother me though, but I'll give it a try. So I'm even using the star sense. So it's telling me I'm right there. I see, again, I see kind of like that star uh, cluster, or maybe it's not even a cluster, it's just a random pattern. The very tip is like, it looks like a triangle, has a couple more. I mean, I do think, I, like, I can't confirm. I do see something a little, most of them kind of look fuzzy. There is one, but I can't really tell. You know, normally, you know, someone would say yes, Yes, it is. No, it's not. Maybe in a dark sky or a semi-dark sky would be able to confirm, but uh, from a white zone, I can't say. So if you can't say, then it's maybe on the edge of visibility. So yeah, that's what I thought. So that one, uh, M78, not really possible, uh, I guess from a white zone. So let's just skip that one for now. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. Uh, we tried two more things uh, so we can clear the page. I had a feeling, um, you know, I was pretty sure because, you know, the Orion Nebula is the brightest one. Uh, the ring can be seen and a few others, but this one is uh, kind of dim, so it's kind of um, not going to work. But sometimes it doesn't hurt to try type of thing. Um, okay, that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're on the forums and somebody asks about uh, any video that I have, why not? Uh, share the link with me or with them if you don't mind um, If you guys uh, know anybody getting into the hobby uh, share them uh, give them my link uh, I got about 190 video 190 videos so far and I currently uh, now started a membership uh, page I, I'm gonna yeah. try to do at least one video a month for uh, memberships I'm gonna try to throw out shout outs or put uh, the people who subscribe to the membership uh, on to thank you for your continued support. I also do have thumbs up so on every video and that's how you can contribute. Like, comment, subscribe. Why not you? Why not me?